Welcome to the Pursuit Rooted Podcast. I am Joseph Johnson, and this is not my lovely wife, Samantha Johnson, but it's Matt Laws. Matt Laws, our worship leader extraordinaire. Um, Matt's joining me today, and if you come to Pursuit on the first and third Sunday of each month, you'll get to see Matt mm-hmm. and his lovely wife, Bree, lead worship here, along with many of our other mm-hmm. talented individuals. So I want to invite you out, 6 p.m., but I highly advise you follow us on social media, Pursuit. Uh, young adults of uh, Richmond House of Prayer, because sometimes we go off the grid. Uh, it's off the, off the grid, out of the sanctuary yeah. for certain. You know, sometimes we go do events, uh, like we'll have worship out of coffee shop, mm-hmm. which was it's always been great. We always have a good turnout for that. So if you follow us, you'll get to see all those things coming through. Um, and we're wrapping up our final podcast for this sermon series over the vital spiritual practices, things that are, I think, in my mind, are pretty vital to the life of a yep. believer. We've talked about, last month we did a whole section just over scripture, mm-hmm. but we talked about prayer, we talked about fasting, uh, we've talked about community, and now we're talking about evangelism. And yeah, I like the way with this kind of, this conversation kind of started off where uh, we were talking about evangelism in the life of a disciple. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't think about evangelism as being beneficial to the disciple. Yeah. But for one, Jesus told us to do it. He told us, go and make disciples. You said this in the last recording, like disciples make disciples. Yeah. That's exactly right. And a lot of times people don't do the work that Jesus told us to do, which is to go and make disciples because they don't feel equipped. Yeah. And it's like, well, a disciple is a student. They're a learner. The apostles were still disciples of Christ. They were still learning from him. So there's, we, as, soon as, we, as soon as we're in the door, as soon as we're in the kingdom, we're in the family, we should be going for it. We should be going after it. Um, there's nothing wrong with like needing to, to to grow in your knowledge and your understanding of things. Do it, but in the process of doing it, share the gospel. Introduce people to Jesus. Um, we used to, we talked about Apollos as the example. You know, he was doing all the right stuff and he was very good at it, mm-hmm. but he was preaching John's baptism. And Priscilla and Aquila came along and said, "Hey, everything you're doing is fantastic." But let's talk about Jesus, you know, and it and it, it altered Apollos' course and he became that much more effective. So, yes, we do need to come in and learn. We do need to grow, but we got to do we got to do the work of evangelism. We're going to talk about why that's so important to the life of a believer. So what is what is evangelism, Matt? Yeah, I think evangelism is just the, the term we use to just spreading the good news of, of the gospel. And that's and that's really all it is, you know, that Jesus, you know, <clears throat> came as the only Son of God. You know, He came, lived a sinless life, um, was died and ro- died and rose again for our redemption, took our, took our sin upon Him, and that we can be saved and we can spend eternity with Him in heaven. And I think that's that's really really what it is. And like again, like the gospel again is like it's not just salvation, but it's like to become a disciple. It's like there's more to lot more to this gospel than just. Uh, get out of hell free card or whatever you may want to say. It's more to it's more to it than that. But there's a whole there's a whole another life whenever the old man is dead and the new man rises up in salvation. Like there's this whole new life that I think really the gospel encompasses, and that's what um, that's what the tr- that's tr- the true great commission was. Was it was not just go and see the earth, profess me as as Lord, but go and make the earth full of disciples. There. Yeah, and a lot of people yeah. who who are Christians, and sadly this term Christian and this term disciple have become separated. Mm -hmm. But many times people, Jesus said you got to be born from above. you got to have a spiritual birth. And and when we have that happen, the old is gone, the new comes. Like we are a new person. We are transformed at that moment. The problem is people experience transformation and they just keep living in the same the same way as they did when they had that dead life, that dead existence. A disciple says, this is where I was, but this is not what I'm destined for. This is not what I'm called for anymore. I'm no longer connected to this. There's more, there's more, there's eternal life, which is to know God, the father and Jesus Christ, whom he sent, like to, to do life with them now, to do life with other believers and to see the power of God spread, the kingdom of God spread I don't have to live the way I was. I can be free from that and I can grow and I can learn. And then as I'm growing and learning, I'm telling others about it and they're coming in and they're seeing it. Um, so the, the the church, like as a whole, we come together, we exist to, to 
to be a witness to the gospel, to be witnesses of what Christ did and what he's still doing and what he's going to do. Um, and all around us, there's people who they've never heard this. They've never heard about the love of God. They never heard how that they were created by him, that they're known by him. Um, they may have a desire for more of life, but they don't know what that desire is. So it's our responsibility to go out and to share that gospel. It's our responsibility, no matter where we're at. It doesn't matter if you're day one Christian. You're in the family. This is the mandate. Go and make disciples. That's what we're supposed to be doing. So that's that's what we're going to talk about. You know, and, and I I, lo- I love this. And I, and yeah. we'll get into we'll get into more of like the experience of like sharing the gospel. But um, f- let's talk about sharing and doing versus doing and sharing. Let's you know that's yeah. let's, let's kind of break this down here. Um, so I'll read this first here, and then we'll I'll let you take it away. James one twenty two through twenty six says, "Be, but be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man who looks intently at his natural face in the mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away, and at once forgets what he was like. So what what is that? What are we what are we getting at with that there? With here with uh, sharing the gospel? Um, what are you thinking here? Yeah, I think it's you know as we. Like you said, like immediately, like no matter what stage of your Christian life you're in, you like immediately are called to go and 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 do this thing. Like it's like you're it's a reception, and there's a do. And I think I was thinking about too, like the man um, who was blind from birth that Jesus healed, and they brought him into the synagogue. You know, like thinking about people, like you know, if you're looking at yourself, you're a new believer, and you say, "I just I was just saved, I was just freed and delivered." Like thinking about the man, like they brought brought him into the synagogue and questioned him. And it's like, oh, well, who is this guy that did these things to you? And he's like, listen, all I know is that I was blind and now I see. Like, that's that's all I know. And that and that's that's your testimony. And I think that's what immediately, no matter how much you know about the Bible, no matter how much biblical knowledge you have or, like, or how much, like, church things you've learned or don't know, like, you immediately have a testimony that, of God's saving power in your life. And immediately, like, that, that calls us to go and tell people, go and tell people about it and go and, you know, and like once we've heard the word, once we've received salvation, once we've received a change, you know, like if we don't take action with that, you know, it's like, you know, like we said here in James, you know, like you're looking, you're looking at yourself in a mirror and you see that there's something wrong or you see that there's something that needs to change and you don't make a change. It's the same thing. It's like, you know, if you've received this gift, how much more we should freely give it away again. Um, so that's kind of how I think about it for sure. Yeah, and what people don't realize is that in the process of sharing the gospel, in the process of seeing people come into an encounter with the presence of God, like, so say you, you come in and you share your testimony, and, and that's where you start at with the gospel. Mm-hmm. Like, all I know is I was blind and now I see. Yeah. And, then, and then you learn, this, it was Jesus. You know, Jesus did this. Um, in the process of sharing your testimony and sharing the gospel, you see other people's lives impacted. You see people come into an encounter with the truth and with the presence of God, and then they they experience that transformation. They experience that new birth, and they come into the kingdom. When you see that happen, it enhances your faith because now you're actually bringing yourself into alignment with what Christ has said. That's faith. Yeah. Faith is when I bring myself into alignment with truth, and you can see it on me. If you have, if you have a faith that you can't see, then you don't have faith. Like, I, it, there has to look like something. Yeah. When I bring myself into alignment and I'm obedient to what Christ said, I'm doing the things, then I should expect the fruit. Because I, and I meant to say this before, but like in the life of a disciple, sometimes it can be about not doing all the wrong things. I'm just, I'm not doing the wrong things anymore. But I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing the right things. So you look at their tree, and the tree don't have no fruit on it. It's not rotten fruit. It just ain't got no fruit. Yeah. And it's like, no, there should be fruit on your tree. Um, on the life of a, of a disciple, if I'm sharing the gospel and other people are being transformed by that, that enhances my faith. That encourages me. That strengthens me. Um, that That's powerful. And then people don't realize that. People don't see that evangelism it's supposed to be a normal part of the Christian life. Like, if you're a Christian and you're not sharing the gospel, then you're not being obedient to Jesus. Yeah. If we, if every Christian shared the gospel the way that we're supposed to, the way that the way that 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 Christ has told us to, go make disciples, go share the gospel, go reveal the kingdom everywhere you go. We wouldn't need to advertise or have social media 
or anything like this because the doors would be just be knocked off the hinges. We would have to knock the walls down to make room for people. All the body needs to do is what Jesus said and everything else will take care of itself. You know, it, we do the work, God gives the increase. Um, but in the process of us doing the work and watching him move, it, it molds us and it shapes us. Um, yeah, that's, and people don't realize that. Like, well, you know, I'm not very bold or I'm, I'm kind of scared about stepping out. I don't know enough. It's like, just go do it. You're going to mess up. You're going to mess up terribly. You're going to get stuff wrong. You may even tell them something that's not right. <laughs> I've, I've, I've seen that happen where somebody's like sharing the gospel and they say something. I'm like, mm, well, I don't, okay, keep going. You know, just, just, you know, we'll, we'll, but, but sometimes because they don't know, but you don't come down on them. You, yeah. you take them aside and you say, Hey, let me help you. Maybe help you in how you're, how you're explaining this or whatever. Yeah. Um, but you just go and do. And that's the beautiful thing about it. I get, I'm getting, I'm getting wound up over here. Up. I know. Yeah. The beautiful thing about it is when we just go do it and we trust him, he shows up. He shows up every time. Yeah. I can't heal people in the sense that I possess the power. I've been given authority. The power has been, I've been baptized in power, but I have to go be obedient to what Jesus said. And then his power begins to move and flow and do what he can, only it can do, what only he can do. Um, but so many times we're like, well, you know, we'll just use church meetings for evangelism. Church meetings aren't meant for evangelism. Church meetings are meant for the body to come together and pour out and minister to the Lord together and to do life together, like we were talking about. Evangelism is supposed to be the, the body going out and sharing the gospel and seeing lives transformed. Man, if, if we can fix this thing in disciples, like right from the beginning. If we could get disciples right from the beginning when they come in the family, evangelizing, even if you're doing a terrible job at it, you think you're doing a terrible job at it, keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. Like just go and do, and God will show up. You don't know what you're doing? Get somebody to go with you. Um, I'm jumping ahead of myself here, but whenever I, I first started like stepping out and praying for people, you know, just out randomly, um, like, you know, just really want to see people healed out in public. Sometimes people come to me and they'd be like, yeah, I really want to see this. I'm like, okay, well, let's go, just go out with me. And I remember one night, a, a guy at the church and I went out, we watched a movie and we saw the guy taking tickets. His ankle was jacked up because of a skateboard accident. And while we're standing there, I didn't have a word of knowledge or anything like that. I just, I could see that there was a problem with it. It's like, hey, can we pray for you? And he was like, yeah. So we prayed for him and God healed him right there. And that guy that was with me, he was like floored because he had never seen that happen in public before. It only ever happened in church services, you know, things like in special services even, you know, depending on where you're, what kind of church you're in. Um, but that's supposed to be a normal part of Christian life. And the demonstration of the power of God is supposed to go hand in hand with the speaking of the truth of the gospel. Paul said, I've, I have fully preached the gospel, Romans 15, 18, I think. I have fully preached the gospel in word and deed. Not just in what I've said, but in what I've done. They've seen the grace of God moving through me. It's supposed to be normal for us. That we've made it not normal. Yep. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I, I'm going to I'm gonna have to calm down and give you room to talk That's here good. because yeah, I get I get really fired up about this. But um, yeah, do you got anything you want to say before we no, go on the next I section? Think, I think too, like you know, talking about that, <clears throat> like increasing our own faith. And I think as we share the gospel and we see how the power how the power of God can impact different people's life it can really expand unto us like every, like all that Christ died for. I think it's easy for us to understand like Jesus' sacrifice in the scope of our own sin and like realizing like, okay, this is what I was saved from. This is what he did for me. This is what he's done for me. But like seeing it and it's all goes back to increasing our faith. It's like, there's so much like, like he died for everybody's, everybody's sin, everybody's issue beyond anything that I would ever have to personally deal with or go through. He like, you know, he like, you know, I've never dealt with drug addiction, but he died for his, like his sacrifice atones the drug addict. And then like, or like, you know, we talk about like sexual sin is such a hot topic, but you know, like if I've never dealt with X, Y, and Z sexual sin, like his, his, his atonement applies to those people and they can come to, they can come to the salvation of Christ because of his sacrifice. And there's so much more, I think that it's easy for us to put, and then, like, I feel like churches will do this too. Like, we'll put God's in box, God in a box, what He can do based on our own experience, and we can like say the blood only applies 
to these areas because that's what we've seen. But there's so much more that like when we go out and share the gospel and we get out in the trenches where these people are at and go down and find them, no, like no matter how deep in the muck or the mire they may be, you know, we find them in these places that we can see like what the true power of God is. You know, like we hear so many times about testimonies and like, I'm sure you have testimonies too, of, like being in Brazil and like people testify about like, you know, mystery in like Africa and like some of these other places, like the thing that, you know, like where it talks about, you know, like where sin abounds, grace even more abounds and we can never see grace abound in a way if we, you know, if we don't share the gospel and see the power of God impact other people's life outside of our own. So I think that's really powerful. Yeah. So, and we're called to be living letters. We're called to be living letters that are read by everybody. Yeah. So my life should be representing the gospel. Yeah. People should be able to look at my life and see it. But, and, and I, people, you know, will say like presence evangelism. Okay. I, I don't have a problem with that. If everywhere you go, you're leaking the Holy Spirit. Like if you were so overflowing with Christ that you can't walk in a room without people like, visibly being shaken by the presence of God that's with you. Now, I'm not saying this as if, that, as if that is abnormal. That is supposed to be normal. And there are people who are like that. There's people to this day, if they, if they walked in this building right now, I would be like, you would, you would, you know, there's because when, when they're around, there's something about the presence of God on their life. Yeah. It, it's powerful. Um, yeah, there's a story of Smith Wigglesworth, and I, I've not vetted this story. I've heard it shared a lot. I'm, I'm, I'm sharing it now, having said I've not seen this from the source. I've not heard this from the source. But supposedly he, he was on a train car, uh, on a train. He was in, in the car, and he went to the bathroom and prayed. And then when he came back out, people were like, they were down the ground under the presence of God in that, in that place. And it was like, he, of course, he began to do what Smith did, you know. He was wild, but... Like there's something powerful about the presence we carry, but I have to actually be carrying something, yeah. and that comes with from intimacy with God and from have, living a life of trust. Now I can say, well, you know, I'm a Christian. I'm just at my workplace, and people can see like that I don't lie and I don't steal. And it's like there's plenty of non-Christian people who don't lie and steal. I know lots of people who aren't Christians that are very morally stand-up individuals. You know, um, there has to be more. Yeah. So we, if we're gonna if we're gonna lean on presence evangelism, we have to actually be carrying the presence, you know. But we have to be in a place where we are speaking the truth, we're living the truth, and we're displaying the truth. We have to be doing that as disciples. That's what we're called to do. Um, yeah, as yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just like blow through everything <laughs> in, in one, you know, and in, in just a, a few minutes if I don't slow down here. Um, but our mandate from Christ is to go and share the, share the gospel, make disciples of all nations. So if, if our lives, if what we're carrying, what we're displaying, what we're speaking, if that doesn't look like Christ, then why would anybody else want it? You know, nobody wants a Christianity that looks like the world with a tag that says, I, I'm not going to hell. Yeah. Like, you know, you're not giving them, you're not showing them that, that anything you actually believe in is real. Yeah. But when we look like Christ, we sound like Christ, we act like Christ. His presence is on that. His power is on that. So God's action happens through our simple obedience. When I'm obedient and I step out and I speak the gospel, I proclaim the good news, no matter if I'm comfortable. I, I've shared the gospel before when I've not been very comfortable to share the gospel with the people I've been around, but that didn't change the fact that the mandate still stood to go make disciples. It doesn't matter how I feel, you know, uh, in the book of Acts, whenever they, they went out and they got beat and then they, they prayed and they were like, yeah, we got beat for Jesus. And it was like, God, give us more boldness. And God was like, you got it, you know, and, and the place was shook and they were filled with the spirit. It's like, if you want boldness, then start putting yourself in a place where you need boldness. Like, why do we need the comforter if we're going to stay in a place where we're comfortable? I need to go out and get uncomfortable. And for many people that is sharing the gospel, go and start doing it and watch as the comforter begins to come. He gives you that boldness. He gives you that strength, but then your faith is strengthened. It's made alive. Um, so it increases our faith more and more whenever we do that. Um, and I'm going I'm to, I'll, I'll hit a couple of these and I'll, I'll turn it over to you and let you, let you go through some of them here. Um, but when we go out, we have to trust that he's going to give us the words to say. Yes, I do study to show myself approved, but the Holy Spirit is living in me. 
I have to be willing to lean into what he is speaking to me in that moment because maybe I wanted to share the gospel in a certain way, but he knows how they're going to hear it. He knows how they're going to hear it. And that kind of gets into ministering with the gifts a little bit too, but it's important. It's important that we, we have an ear to hear the Holy Spirit and that we know the truth and then we start sharing it. Um, so what would you say, like, let, let's, let's get into how scripture applies in this. Yeah, because we talk about knowing the truth. So is it a requirement that you have the Bible memorized front to back before you start sharing the gospel? Yes. <laughs> no. Um, so, but I think you said something really good there. And I think as like, you know, you're talking, we're talking about like this process of discipleship and like becoming a disciple and like allowing yourself to be discipled. But I think it starts with, you know, you may not, you may like, obviously, you know, we're, 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 actively like pursuing spirit the, the true spiritual disciplines where it's like actively seeking out or like praying and spending time in God's presence. We're studying his word like we talked about in the last sermon and podcast series. You know, we're learning the word, like we're taking time to study it so that we know what God has to say. But I think first and foremost, like we have to put ourselves in a position of willingness to hear and, and like training our ear. And I think we y'all talked about this like in some of the earlier podcast series too mm-hmm. about you know, learning to hear, to, to learning what it means to hear the Spirit as it as it speaks into our life on a daily basis, to know whatever we need to share the gospel with somebody or to know, like, what what the words are to say. And I think, too, you know, like, what little bit of the Bible you know, like, I think we talk about this, too, like, you know, you're studying the Word, and, you know, you may not remember everything that you study, but, you know, even if you're just starting out as a new believer trying to share the gospel, what little bit you've read, I believe the Holy Spirit can bring that to your remembrance, and that's what the Word tells us, that He'll bring those things to our remembrance when we need it. And that includes these times of evangelism. But I think first and foremost, as we're reading the word, we have to say, Lord, I'm allowing you. And I think that comes if we read the word in that way, where we're starting out every day with saying, Lord, I'm open to what you have to say Mm -hmm. to me in this word. And we begin to develop this ear to hear what God has to say in his word. We'll hear it. Like we put ourselves in a position to be able to hear what he has to say in our daily lives and how we need to share the gospel to somebody and who we need to share the gospel to. Yeah, that's good. That's good. And it's like, just start with what you got. Yeah. You know, if you know John 3, 16, start with John 3, yeah. 16 and go, just go and share. Um, you know, and, and something that something I'm very passionate about, which I've been yeah. very passionate about this whole thing, but is actually the gifts of the spirit and how they work in evangelism. There was many times where Jesus would teach and then he would demonstrate. Sometimes he would demonstrate and then he would teach. But it was ultimately for the purpose of bringing people into an encounter with the Father. So what role do the gifts of the Spirit have in evangelism? They're, they're meant to be like at the forefront, I believe. I really, truly believe that. Um, when, I, when I first started going after like seeing the gifts and the power and things like that, of God displayed again, because I hadn't seen it. I really wanted to see it. I was very excited about it. And I was talking to people and I was asking, I remember I asked a couple of ministers one time, like, hey, why don't we see people raised from the dead anymore? These are Pentecostal ministers. And they didn't want, they didn't want to look like they didn't know what they were talking about. But at the same time, like, they didn't want to, you could, you could see their unbelief. That's what I was trying to get. They, you just, and they started like trying to, one of them actually said, I'm going to let him answer. And the other guy was like, well, you know, we do see people raised from the dead spiritually. And, start, and I was like, mm, we were talking about cold bodies here. Yeah. Like, you know, this is, yes, I agree. We do see people raised from the dead spiritually. Um, it's actually not raised from the dead spiritually because you're born again. You're, you're reborn. Yeah. So, but what we're talking about is like true resurrection. And I started finding out that, oh, this stuff is happening. There, is, there are places, not just, everybody thinks the mission field. Well, the, when the mission field, they see this stuff. No, people see that happen in our country. People are seeing resurrections happen in America today. If you, if you want to find out that it's there, you can. But a lot of people don't even believe that it still happens. People don't believe that, a lot of times people don't believe healing still happens and the prophetic in these things. These were meant to be manifestations of the power of God that would bring people into an encounter with him. So the, the, the vineyard movement with John Wimber, I think they, they were the first ones to use this term power evangelism, where you're going out and you're ministering in the power of the Holy Spirit, the gifts, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the prophetic words of knowledge, these kinds of things. I, I showed this, I think I mentioned this to you at the beginning, but like I've never seen something kick the door open wide for evangelism 
like watching someone get healed or saying, hey, I felt like the Holy Spirit said this. Does that make sense to you or is that true? And just watching, sharing something that could be so simple, but it's so deeply personal to them that they, they, you instantly have their full attention and they are wide open to the re- receiving of the gospel. I've, I've never seen anything like it before. Um, and that's why I tell people it's a necessity. Like you need to have the power of God moving in your life. And that takes a life that's, that's yielded and it's obedient. Um, but those gifts like word of knowledge, you know, being out in town and you, maybe you're somewhere and God says, you feel like God's telling you that the, the person next to you has got an issue with their shoulder. And you're like, well, what do I do with that? You ask them, yeah. do you got a problem with your shoulder? Yeah. And then that becomes, maybe they're not a Christian. If, that's, if they're not a Christian, then now you have an opportunity for evangelism. Maybe they are a Christian. Well, now you have an opportunity to encourage a brother or sister for them to be healed because you, you lay hands on them, you pray for them right there in, in, you know, in Walmart and they see you, or wherever you're at, Kroger, Whole Foods, wherever you're, wherever you're shopping, and you see them healed. Yeah. And now their faith is encouraged. Now they know, wow, you know, God sees me. God sees me. Um, the gifts of the Spirit is, to me, is a necessity in, in evangelism. And I've, you know, people ask, well, what do I do? You just go and do. Yeah. You just go and do. You, you trust him and you go and you do. That's what you're supposed to do. Um, but when, when the power is evident, the power of God is evident, it, people are, are incredibly receptive to receiving Jesus. It just, and let me think of how to, how to phrase this. I, I said it that way, but let's, I, want, I want to zoom out for a little bit. So the spirit draws. And God's at work in a way that we, in ways that we can't possibly understand, you know. He, he's, he's doing a lot all the time. So I come into a meeting with somebody, and the Holy Spirit gives me a word of knowledge or whatever it may be. Maybe we just pray for them, and they're, and they're healed. There's no word. There's no prophetic or nothing like that. They just, we just pray for them. They're healed. He's operating in that moment. Mm-hmm. His presence is there touching them. They've had this encounter with the power of God. That's that drawing. Now their heart is open and they hear the voice of the Father calling them. They don't know what it is quite yet, but that's where we come in and say, hey, you just got healed. Let me tell you who healed you. Yeah. Let me tell you who that was and how he's still alive today and that he loves you and he died for you. And you begin to share the gospel. And they're, I, just time after time, I've watched people give their life to Jesus because of an encounter with the power of God like that. Yeah. Um, and there's been times where I, it's not had anything to do with the gifts of the Spirit. You just share the truth. And in sharing the truth, people people receive it. But we have to do it. Yeah. We have to step out and be willing to do it and trust that His power is going to be present you know, to heal, to save, to deliver everything. You know, it, um, that requires trust. And I think that's kind of the, the underpinning here of why we don't see more Christians evangelizing sure. is a trust issue. Yeah. People, you have to trust God and go and do. Uh, it's, it's a necessity. So we see examples in the scripture of like Jesus, you know, operating in the power. And then, like I said, he, he, sometimes he does and then he teaches, sometimes he teaches and does. But like he, the woman at the well, he, he, he shared this knowledge of her, you know, of her life with her. It opened the door wide open to an encounter. Um, the woman with the issue of blood touched the hem of his garment. Healed. Instant power encounter. And then the lame man. Lame man at the pool. He didn't know what was going on. Yeah. Jesus did. Jesus understood. And it, it, it's, it's what we carry. It's what we speak. It's what we live. It's what we display. It's all of it. Yeah. it, it goes into our evangelism. Um, so I'm going I'm to take a step back. Again, I get really no, fired up about this. I don't want to talk the whole time. No. Um, so I want to I let you cover up this last section here about how this actually impacts our lives. Sure. And then, and then you, can, you can land the plane here a little bit. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so what, what does this look like in the life of a believer? Like how does, we've we touched on it a little bit, but let's like really drill into this. How does evangelism actually impact the life of the believer? Yeah, so I think uh, first and foremost, like we already said, you know, as we, see as we like step out on what Jesus says to do and like after we when we I think anytime we take Jesus at his word and we like and we like test him like we'll like we'll always taste and see that he's good. So as we like mm-hmm. as we step out and do these things and we see how the power of God can impact people's lives, I think again we're like growing in our boldness and our in our obedience. And I think as we whenever we 
try the Lord and see that he's good, you know, it becomes even easier the next time to step out and obey and say, Lord, I know even if it may seem difficult or even if it may, may seem out of our comfort zone, it makes it easier for us to say, okay, God, I'll step out and do what you said because I, I see, I've seen what you, I've seen what you could, you could do. I've seen what you've done in the past Lord, and I, and I believe that you're faithful to do it again and I want to see it again. Um, so it, it allows us to grow in our boldness and our obedience. And I think too, like there comes like there, there requires like this measure of faith. Like we talked about initially to like when you don't have the boldness, but still step out anyway and trust that God will give you the boldness. And I think, that's how like he continues to grow and mold us as we grow in obedience, even in sharing the gospel. So I think, you know, and I think it, 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 and just if it was only God's ability to save and deliver, that would be powerful. But whenever we could see physical manifestations of His of His power, whether that's whether that's a healing, whether that's us, the Lord speaking to us through a word of knowledge or, or, or a word of or faith or a word of any of discernment of anything that's happening, of any operation that gets the Spirit, mm-hmm. it increases our faith in the supernatural because I think so many times as people begin to learn about the gifts and, you know, depending on what background they come from, they may have like a certain degree of comfort and familiarity with certain gifts or with some of the gifts, but not all the gifts or some people may come into this like as they're beginning to grow in this without any comfort with any of the gifts. Mm-hmm. But as we begin to see God move in those ways, it, like it increases our faith that not only can God save, he, save and heal for an eternal destination, but he can make an impact in our lives today. And we believe that he can continue to, he's faithful to perform it even, even today. And I think as we do that and we see people changed and healed as we grow in that, we 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 trust that God wants to use us in those areas more. He wants to continue to deepen our uh, relationship with the Spirit and continue to allow us to hear and do what thus saith the Lord today, like through mm-hmm. the Holy Spirit. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, and then whenever we see these people who their lives are saved and forever changed, like these lives are saved through our obedience, it's not us that's saving or healing or changing them, but it's through our obedience and we become a vessel for God to move. We realize just how amazing a gift it is that God has given to us. And I think, I think so many times as we were kind of, you know, a couple of semesters ago, whenever Michael Baker and I were doing the daily revival small group, Mm -hmm. um, we got super fired up, you know, at one point, you know, I think about all the time, you know, this thing, like this, this amazing gift that God has given us. Whenever we realize that the same power that rose Jesus from the grave is the same one that saved me mm-hmm. on the on the from the first day that I believed. It was it, it. I didn't have to wait for that power to come. I didn't have there was there wasn't a different power that allows me to go to heaven that can keep me and that can sustain me. And it's not a different power that can free the drug drug addict that can save me. Mm-hmm. But that same power that rose Jesus from the dead is present in my life. It's the same one that sustains me. It's the same one that saved me initially. It's the same one who allows me to hear his voice and do what he said to do. It's it's it's, the, it's that same spirit that makes you want to do it. And whenever you realize that that spirit is within you and it's the one that's empowering you, I think it can give you, like we already said, this boldness. Like, and I think that's something too. I think we like compartmentalize things that God does and things that the spirit does, but we don't like the same spirit that saves us is the same one that has the power to raise the dead. And, it's, and it, when you know that, whenever you know that it's more than just more than just you know, like a simple like sharing of the gospel, but whenever you know, there's a whole other world that somebody that the like and like we talked. I think we talked like you know, oftentimes we talk about how people are oftentimes seeking something that they don't know what they're seeking mm-hmm. for, but we we realize like this love that we that we've come to know is that thing that they're 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 longing for that 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 is waiting to enter into their life and make them whole. I think it empowers us to to see the world saved. And, and I think something that we've not really touched on with this is like allowing like the gospel to soften our hearts, I think too, because I think it's so easy for us to get hard hearted against, um, against certain things or against certain groups of people. But whenever we realize that, you know, it, it gives us a passion, I think for, for the people who don't know the Lord and that gives us a passion for these people that you, that you want them to not only be saved from hell, but to know what this abundant life looks like while they're here on earth, that they may be walking through um, depression or anxiety or struggles or whatever it is they're walking through, but there's this abundant life that's available to them that they're missing out on because we've not shared the gospel. Yeah. And I think that's something really powerful that we, if we can get a hold of 
it like would make us it makes us want to share the gospel more it wants us to step out on our faith more it wants us to be obedient to him more because again every time we try him we can see that he's good so yeah, yeah. that's good stuff i like what you said there at the end too um because like if the if the gospel if my evangelism that, that i'm that i'm undertaking is not coming from a place of an overwhelming love for the people I'm evangelizing to, then, then where's that? What, then what, what is my motive? Yeah. You know, there's different forms of evangelism. Some forms of evangelism is, let me tell you everything that's wrong with what you're doing. Um, that never helped anybody. It just, it just didn't, you know. Um, when we try to use biblical truth in the sense of like, you think of how to say this in a way that's not going to get me in trouble. People aren't open to hear what the letter of Romans says. You know, it, but people, when they have an encounter with the love of God, that's a, that's a place where the gospel can take root, where that transformation can take place. And many times, people's experience with Christians is about what they're against. It's not about the love that they're overflowing with. And, and some people say, well, I love, if I, it's love for me to tell somebody that they're going the wrong way. Yes. We're, we're, we're not lying to them and we're not sugarcoating anything like that, but there's a way to evangelize, to, to share the truth with people where they have an encounter with the love of God. And there's a way to do it to you share the truth, but you've cut everybody's ears off like Peter and Malchus, you know, in the scripture it's like I've taken the truth and I've wheeled it wildly and and now the people are deaf to hear the gospel because of what I did because yeah. I chopped their ears off yeah. you know um, if you don't know what I'm ref- people don't know what I'm referring to from the story of Jesus and you know in the garden with the sword or G- Jesus and Peter and you know, James and John and the disciples um, so we have to when we share the gospel our motive has to be the love of Christ and our heart has to stay softened because there's communities that that need to hear the gospel, that the church needs to bring the light into. Um, some of those communities people aren't comfortable with, but we need to get comfortable with. Yeah. You know, uh, where do, how far do I want to go down this rabbit trail, bud? <laughs> do it. Um, I'll start this off by saying I was listening to someone who was ministering in the country where Islam was the predominant religion. And they said a woman came and they ministered. She, she got prayer by a member on the team. She got healed and she went home and she shared with her husband what happened. So the next night she showed up with her husband and all their kids <coughs> and his other wife and all their kids. What do we do with that? What do you do with that? A question like that makes people uncomfortable. Yeah. What do you do when you have someone who's made irreversible decisions show up in your in your in in your midst or you're evangelizing them? They don't look like you, they don't sound like you. They they've walked a very different path than you. But they still matter to God. What what do we do? about Christians who are not comfortable with groups of people um, that need to hear the gospel? Well, the, the answer is we have to get over ourselves and actually know who Jesus is because the love of God is for all those people. And they need to have an encounter with the, with the love of Christ. Um, that, that's, that's, that's really important. Yeah. That's really important. And it's not that we, we say, come as you are and stay as you are. We say, come as you are. Let God transform you. Be born again. And when they're born again, we don't say, stay the way you were, where you were. It's, no. You've abandoned that life to follow this one. And that door is open for everybody. It's open for the, the housewife, it's open for the, uh, 
the man who's working 80 hours a week running a business. It's open for uh, people in the transgender LGBTQ community. Like it's open for all races. It's open for everybody. It doesn't matter what your background is. The door to the kingdom is open and it's through Christ. And we don't come to stay the way we are at this moment. We come and we lay our lives down and we're born again and we follow him. And as disciples of Christ, we're called to take the gospel into all communities. Even if we don't understand, you know, if we don't understand that community, we don't understand the way that they live or the decisions that they make. I don't have to, but they need Jesus. They need to know Christ. And we need people who are willing to be laid down lovers to Jesus, laid down lovers of Christ. They're willing to go wherever, say, go, go to the people, the, the, the unloved ones, the unwanted ones, and to share the gospel. And I'm thankful that we have a, I believe we have a church here that, yeah. that is very welcoming to, to everybody, but it's not a church that, that says, come here and stay the way you are. Yeah. It's a church that says, the doors open wide to the kingdom. It's through Jesus. And when you're here, we're calling you to a higher way of living, which is a life with Christ, to abandon what you were, to walk as God has called you to. Um, and that's for every community. That's for every tribe, nation. It's for everybody. Um, I think that's the, that's the power. That's the power of the gospel. Is that like you know, it's applicable. It's been applicable for. It was just as applicable to the Greeks and Romans that it was initially written to two thousand years ago, just as it is today to every unknown tribe or creed or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Like it, like Jesus is like. It's applicable, like the the sacri- the like the death and resurrection of Jesus and the power that comes through that is applicable, and it's available to everyone. And I think too, like you know, like you're talking about, Jesus has done the work of salvation, but His command to us was to make disciples. And I think too, like you know, it's His job. It's it's His job to it's our job to put people in a position to encounter the love of God and to be transformed by His love. And it's also his job to continue. It's the Holy Spirit, you know, once the Holy Spirit comes in, it's it's like he's continuing to mold and shape them. But it's our job, you know, talking about community last week and discipleship and like the life of of a disciple. It's our job to get alongside them, to disciple them, to like, to correct them when they need correcting, to uplift them when they need uplifting. Mm -hmm. Because again, like I think, especially I think in our area, like, you know, it's so easy to like have this background of, of church and it's so easy to like, Kind of, even if you didn't grow up in church, you kind of know like what the church things are and what the Christian things are. But there's so mm-hmm. many people that they don't have that at all. You know, we're still called to disciple them and to make them disciples too. Yeah. Um, so I think that's like something we can't miss. And, I, and thank God that we can have the power of God manifest in people's life and they can come to the knowledge of Jesus through being healed or whatever. But I think we have to do it all in love and have to trust that God will equip us whenever we end up with these people that don't look and sound like us. And I think that's what, as disciples and as believers, we have to come to the Lord in humility again, like, like we said, and say, Lord, what, what, what does it look like for me to disciple this person? Lord, teach me what it looks like to Mm -hmm. disciple these people. Yeah. And to to have the humility to say that fundamentally there was no difference between that person and I, Yeah, we were both dead. Yeah. And Jesus didn't come to make, Bad people, good. He yep. made. He came to bring dead people from death to life. I was dead. This person who looks very different than me, who's who's made very different decisions than me. It would be easy for me to on on the surface level say they've lived a worse life than me, yep. and that's what we see kind of like that comparative righteousness, which is false. Um, that that is completely incorrect. But to look at them and say they're no different than me in the sense of they are dead. I was dead. Now I'm carrying life and I'm here to bring it to them. Um, it's, it's great that we have, we have people in our church that, that go into the jails and minister. And I've not got a part, I've not got to be a part of that particular ministry. It's something I've been wanting to, to get involved in. But, you know, when you go into the jails, you encounter people who have, who've made bad decisions. And some of those decisions can be pretty heinous, but can you still sit across from them? not with the love that you've produced, but with the love that comes from the Spirit. Share the gospel with them and welcome them into the kingdom when they lay their life down. Um, the, if I remember the story correctly, the killer that they refer to as the son of Sam, 
murder back in the 70s, I believe it was. If I'm not mistaken, now don't quote me on this. I'm not, I'm not, this is, this, I'm literally sharing a story to highlight the point here. Sure. That is it, you know. Um, not supporting this, I don't, I don't know enough about this individual, but, but I have heard the, the, that from what I understand is that he had an encounter with Christ after he committed the murders that he did. He gave his life to Christ. And they couldn't put guards around him who wouldn't walk away Christians because he, he shared the gospel radically in the midst of his jail cell. And the prison guards were transformed by that. That's powerful. That's being a disciple. He didn't let his circumstances, he didn't let his lack of biblical training or anything change the fact that he was following Christ. And if, if that means following Christ from this jail cell, paying the price for the decisions I've made, then so be it. This is where I'm at, and this is where I'm going to start. And the people that we encounter who we're going to share the gospel with, who are going to come in, they're going to be coming from all different walks of life. And when we carry that love and they have an encounter with that and they have an encounter with truth and they have an encounter with the gospel and their lives are transformed, we've got to start them out sharing the gospel right where they're at. If that means at a jail cell, if that means in a nursing home, if that means, you know, in the middle of whatever they're in that we're, we're trying to disciple them through and out of and, and bringing them into this community of life, like, we, we have to go and do it. We have to go and do it. Yeah. So this took a much yeah. uh, deeper uh, turn than I think we, we originally had thought, but it's it's an it's important. That, thank you for saying yeah, that. I think you, you can't miss that. I don't think you like. I don't think you can miss that part of it. For yeah, sure. but so many people do. Yeah, and to be a true disciple means I am without reservation and discrimination sharing the gospel and the love of God, man. And I'm watching him show up, doing what only he can do. Yeah, yeah, it's powerful. You want to land this plane? Yeah. So. Like as we've like kind of already talked about and summarized, you know, you know, these are these are the things that evangelism is. It's a, it's a commandment. It's it's a, we're called like the first thing that whenever we become a Christian, that's our first mandate from the Lord is go and make disciples. The moment you become converted, mm-hmm. it's your job to go forth and keep doing it. Um, you know, and it's we're doing it and trusting that He's going to empower us to do it. That He'll show up in situations and ways that. Only he can do, and he can show up and make himself known in people's life, and show up in his power and presence. And it's we're spreading this gospel to all people, all, all nations, all, all every 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 person on the earth, in order to grow the kingdom of God. Because mm-hmm. it's not his will that any should perish. Because yeah. you know, I think that's what he wants us to do. But with that, we'll go ahead and finish up. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put Sam's hashtag in here yeah. just because she put it in here. She's, she put it in here. Spread the gospel. Grow the kingdom. Hashtag make heaven crowded. crowded. (laughs) Um, Yeah, this has been good. We we said we weren't going to go as long, and here we are. uh, But it was good. It was really good. So with that being said, go and do what Jesus said.